liars. Woo. Okay. That song. Could lose weight off that thing. It's pretty awesome. So, we are talking about on this video, get it bounce, bounce, bounce of outliers and influential points and how it affects our residual line, how it affects our correlation coefficient, how it affects our um, equation of a line. So, dig it bounce, dig it bounce. Let's do it. Now, go to page 11 of your notes, and as you go to page 11 of your notes, I've got two definitions that I squoze in there, and I know you've got room at the bottom, but at the bottom, you might want to be draw some of the pictures that I'm about to show you in a few. Okay, so the first thing here, I want to mention an outlier. We already know what an outlier is, but an outlier is observed pattern outside of the overall, observed point um, away from the overall pattern. Please remember when it comes to outliers for linear regression, that there is no formula. So it just like, eh, it looks like it's an outlier or they're in a, there may be an outlier. If you're not confident about an outlier, you're going to just say there appears to be an outlier, which takes me to the idea of an um, influential point. An influential point is an outlier that greatly affects the slope. And when I say greatly affects it, Sometimes, with the emphasis on sometimes, it'll actually change the slope from a positive to a negative with this presence. So here, as we look at this, it's saying um, which of these points is an outlier. Remove it what, and see what happens. Well, I show that both of the, this is a possible outlier, and so is that one. That one's kind of iffy, but let's see. Oh, if you're thinking that's an outlier, no. That's telling you that one dot equals two children, so that's just a key. Yeah, it fooled me for a second, too. Okay, so as I continue going on here, that correlation is going to, if we, this correlation right here for the 18-year-old child is going to make it stronger. Remember I showed this example before? And look how spread that out that is. And if I have an equation of a line, it's going to go through about here somewhere. Your um, correlation coefficient is going to be very low, meaning close, close to zero. But if I put a point out here, what happens is now it's stretched out like a rubber band, I'm trying to pull this off, and it is going to make your line your equation of a line a lot more linear. Is it going to go through that point exactly? Uh, probably not. But it is going to pull it towards it in one way or the other. So with this outlier here, your R is going to increase it. But if I took this one off, and let me, and then put another one over here, it's still going to strengthen it, but whereas this line originally may have been here, by sticking a point over here, this is not just an outlier. This is referred to as an influential point. And this line that was once like here is literally going to shift over in that direction. Now, is it going to go through it? We've already had this conversation. Not necessarily. But this point, make a note of it, is an influential point, and that influential point does greatly change the slope. It might even make it from positive to negative. Who knows? Depends on how many um, other points are here. It really depends on that. So, I want to go back to my worksheet. And here, so, they told me to make an influential point, and I made an influential point all the way out there. So making that influential point right here, now that is going to weaken the correlation. And the reason it's going to weaken the correlation is because this child 18 is pretty consistently linear with these other dots. But this dot out here is influential. It's not even close to what the line would be. And I know your thoughts are, Ms. Well, well, how would I know if there's a line there? Well, how do you know? 
it's like if you had the dot, you have your dots, and you would put your own line there. Okay, so if I put a point out here, that point is an outlier, but it's most definitely influential because it's going to drag that line towards it. You can see that that point right here is not even in the same direction as that line. Um, it's not even in the area of where that line is going to go. So that's why it's influential. But if I turn, take this off and put a dot right here, well, that's going to strengthen my correlation because it's going to stretch it like the rubber band I just mentioned. Okay, so as you can see here, weakens the correlation. Um, and the slope is going to, it's going to strongly affect the stroke on um, the slope, and that's what the definition of of um, an influential point is, and it may become a negative, like I was saying. Now I want to show you guys something. Now I have not put this on your calendar or in your locker. I kind of prefer that you draw it yourself, um, but maybe later tonight I'll be able to scan it and put it in there, but I'm not making any promises. But here's your just original scatter plot. You can see how nice and linear that is. Look at, here's the equation of the line. Look at that um, correlation coefficient and that coefficient of determination. Very high, very high. Well, it stands to reason. How close is that thing? Then I'm going to stick an outlier right here. Okay? And when I stick an outlier here, here is my new equation of a line. My slope changed just a little. So it changed a little, so it's not influential. It's just going to be an outlier. Here, my correlation did get weaker. Why? Because it's not even in the path of those points. Okay? Zoom into this right here and look and see where, how it's going to basically, how that one point is going to shift that line. And it shifts at very, a very minute amount. Why? Because there are so many points there. That little point's not going to make... Um, a big difference but it does make a shift next as I look at this as I see this right here these are the same original points but now I'm going to stick an outlier here now the slide the equation of this line before was there's your equation and there is your correlation coefficient now I'm going to stick a point right here the new equation of a line let me slide up is here and my correlation of the coefficient correlation coefficient it was stronger so you can see here is the new correlation coefficient just by adding that one point right there based on remember what it was when it was when it was um, original here is the the strength and here's your equation so that one point yes is an outlier but no, it is not influential because, again, look at that slope. It did not increase that slope or change that slope by much. But and please note, it did strengthen, strengthen, strengthen the correlation. And here, as we look at our equations of the line, okay, for the different um, comparing the two. So we can see how that line right here which is the new line with the point shifted it just very slightly in the direction of that of that point and now let's look at this point right here so we have the same data as we have from the original um, um, graph let's look and see what the equation was of the original okay here we go and we see here that your, here's your equation, there's the correlation coefficient, and this is the one that had no outliers. But now, here I have that is not just an outlier, it's an influential point. Because notice what my new slope is. It's 3.3 before it was 5.1. Oh, seriously, now look at our correlation coefficient. Our correlation coefficient, it went down to 74 percent whereas before it was 98 um, percent so and that's just by putting in that point and this point is definitely an influential point point. and let's see what happens to the graph here let's look at the graph by putting in that influential point here's your original line that was given for the original data from the first um, 
from the first scatter plot, it pulls it down towards that. So, and we can see how that slope, which once was 5.1, I should say, forget the slope, the y-intercept. The y-intercept, which is which was once, what was it before? Um, 1.73, by it pulling up the whole line, the new y-intercept is 8.5. Okay, but the big thing here is that look how that point pulled down the line, given all those scatter points. There's look how many data points is that? Maybe 15, 16? Don't count, it's not that serious. But we can see how that one point did so much damage that it pulled that entire line in that direction. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an influential point. Now I wanted to give um, credit where credit's due. This is where I found the information as I was Googling it. So um, you can pull it up if you want to. They have all the examples. I just kind of cut and pasted it and make it a smaller version because some good stuff, good stuff. Now I want you to go to page 13 of your notes. So what we see what's happening here, we're trying to find the relationship between rushing yards and points scored in the 20. 11 National Football League um, when we have 16 games played by um, Jacksonville Jaguars. So here are the number of games and um, later we're going to see that there's some outliers. Well, forget later. We can see here we have an outlier for game 13 and an outlier for game 16. So here's the scatter plot. Describe it. Well, we see that there's, um, there is a very weak um, positive linear relationship between um, the points scored and the rushing yards. How do you know that? Because if you take it and you plug it in, your value for R is squared and R. Which takes us to the next one. For look, Read part B. And they're asking us, the number on um, game 16 was an outlier. They're telling us that. They're asking us what effect that it had. We needed to find the correlation, and we needed to find the equation, the, the line, the least square regression line um, with and without that outlier. Okay, so first of all, here is my equation and my correlation coefficient with the outliers and here it is without the outliers. So we can see that with the outlier it is for the game 16. The game 16 is the one over there and that one actually strengthened the outlier made it strong. Why? It was in the same linear pattern as if I just cover that up. It's the same that's going around about the linear pattern that would be formed if I decided to draw a line there. Okay so we can see here that with that game 16 outlier that we have our R value to be stronger than without the outlier. And we can see how the equations changed. Now, when you're putting this stuff in and you're confirming this, and, and question 69 is like this too. You put in all, don't put in game 13 and 16 until they, well, I don't know how to put this one. When you are doing this right here, I took out game 13. I took out that outlier so that I had, um, for this part right here, I had all the games, but not game 13 um, included. And then after I did that, I took out game 16. So basically, I took out my outliers. And here is everything I just mentioned to you that it made the correlation stronger. And we can also see here that our slope changed a small amount but it's still not influential and yes our slope here became a little steeper and you can um, put your least score regression line in there and see that for yourself but you can also see it based on looking at the slope now let's look read number um, letter B rather and letter B they're talking about looking at game 13 is an outlier. So, um, I found the equation, and it's the same as it was here. 
and I did it with the outliers and without the outlier to find what the difference is. But game six, game 13 rather is an influential point. So with that game being an influential point, I found the correlation. And here, this is um, with an outlier. Look how, how your slope changed. This is with the outlier. That's without. Look at your y-intercept, how it changed, how it dropped. Here, look at your correlation coefficient. This is with the outlier. Again, this is not just an outlier. Game 13 is an influential point. Because look, look at, yes, well, hmm, is that an influential? I take that back. I don't think it's that much of an influential because it did not change that slope that much. But it big time affected the um, correlation. So I take it back. And let's look and see why it's not quite an influential. Because what will happen here now, because if I take that out, looking at all these points, it's reasonable that it could go in that direction. So pulling it closer so yeah I don't quite think that that's going to be an influential point it did change our intercepts big time though so yeah it would pull it up something like that you guys have the um, equation you have the data in your calculator so you can confirm it one way or the other okay so now with that outlier as I said a minute ago or I inferred it correlation is going to get weaker it's going to get closer to zero zero your game 13 the data point um, is not close to the original um, regression line that's what I was talking about so it's going to pull it up towards it um, towards the new line and it's going to cause the um, slope to be um, steeper that's with that outlier but not influential so the slope didn't change that much so like I said if I had paid attention if I have here and take out that and it's going to pull it up a little but nope not enough for it to be influential so before we end just a quick reminder if I look at something like this and I put a point let me um, pause for a second so if I have some data points like this because they're all going in that negative direction and then by putting a point out there that would be influential because why it's going to change that slope big time but if I instead of putting this here and I'll wipe that out in a minute if I put it out there it's just an outlier and that's going to actually strengthen the correlation reminder I should have said this a couple seconds ago when I was referring to this being influential this is also going to weaken the correlation so TTFM ta-ta for now Bye-bye, TTFM, ta-ta for now. Peace out.